As the rector of St Bride's Church, Fleet Street, may I welcome you very warmly to this service of plain song, even song, followed by Benjamin Britten's Ceremony of Carols, an event which is always one of the highlights of our journey through Advent each year. As the journalist church here in Fleet Street, Britain's Ceremony of Carols is a piece that is particularly close to our hearts because its first ever performance on the 5th of December 1942 was by the women of the Fleet Street Choir. May the light and hope of Christ be with us all as our worship begins. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us kneel now and humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou then, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. Son and to the Holy 
Old Testament lesson is written in the first book of Kings, chapter 22, beginning at the first verse. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth-Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the law besides, that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah the son of Imla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah sat each on his throne, having put on their robes, in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah the son of Chenanah made him horns of iron, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, with these shalt thou push the Syrians, until thou hast consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them and speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that I will speak. So he came to the king. And the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king saith unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting up on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this matter, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said to unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth, and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah, the son of Chenanah, went near, and smote Micaiah on the cheek, and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. 
And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back unto Amon the governor of the city, and to Joash the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with bread of affliction, and with water of affliction, until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath spoken not by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament lesson is written in the letter to the Romans, chapter 15, beginning at the fourth verse. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Jesus Christ that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, I saith, saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope 
fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. This is the word of the Lord. believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of heaven's Amen.
satisfaction of thy son, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Let us pray. Lord, we watch and wait for your dawning kingdom. Teach us to walk in the way of your Son and gladden the hearts of your people. And we ask for your blessing on the leaders of all your holy churches, and especially Sarah, our bishop, Alison, our rector, and all who serve this community of St. Bride. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we watch and wait for your reign of peace. We pray for Jerusalem and the Middle East. We pray for all areas of conflict in our world. May all nations lay aside the ways of darkness and put on the armour of light. We ask for your blessing on our King, our government, and the leaders of the nations. We continue to pray also for journalists, and especially those in harm's way in the course of their work. Lord, in thy mercy, 
hear our prayer. Lord, we watch and wait in your saving presence. Be in our communities, places of work, and all centres of education and learning. Draw us to seek the good of all. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, be with all who watch and wait by the side of someone they love. We pray for all who are alone, fearful and anxious. We ask for your blessing on all those in our parish community, in this city and around the world who are in need at this time. And we pray for all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. May your Advent hope sustain us through the dark hours. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we watch and wait for your coming in glory. Preserve us at the hour of our death. We pray for the repose of the souls of all the recently departed and those whose years mine comes at this time. May your holy angels carry the faithful departed to your eternal home. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We commend ourselves and all for whom we have prayed to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen.